So continuing with drawing the graph, now that we have our lane lines, we have our points, and our hole that the graph is going to either go through or then kind of jump over, if you want to think of it like that. I wanted to point out that uh, how you know where the graph starts. So the horizontal asymptote, the concept of that is that the horizontal asymptote is an end behavior model. And it tells us where the graph is going to get closer to <clears throat> when x gets big in the negative direction, when x gets big in the positive direction. So the entire purpose of its existence is to tell us that the graph is going to be really close to the horizontal, this y value of negative 1 when x gets really, really big in the negative direction. So if we were to start moving to the left on this graph, the y values of the function would get closer and closer to negative 1. That's why you always see the graphs like, kind of like a landing strip going in, getting closer and closer like that. So it has to go close to that number. It has to go through that point on the x-axis because the multiplicity of the factor x plus 5 is a 1. Therefore, we're going to cross the x-axis right there at negative 5. And then a behavior near a vertical asymptote. Well, behavior near a vertical asymptote is just like throwing water on a wall. It's either going to go way up or way down. And in this case, we're crossing the x-axis here, so it has to be continuing in this direction. It's going to go up like that. And then we know that the multiplicity of the factor in the denominator, x plus 3, we, don't know, we know that that multiplicity is a 1. So therefore, the behavior on the other side of the vertical asymptote here, it can't be up here, it has to be down here because it's an odd multiplicity of that factor in the denominator. And since it's down here and we have to cross through the y-axis right there, we have to kind of jump through that or jump over that, uh, that hole and then approach the horizontal asymptote when x gets big in the positive direction. So you can kind of see, your eyes can kind of fill in the, the gaps here that we have we just connect, and we connect the, the behaviors that we already talked about. And that would be what the graph would look like. Now, uh, the range then, on the other hand, we, uh, we can now look at the graph and we can see we have an opening in the graph when we move from bottom to top, from, low, from negative infinity to positive infinity. Remember, the range is all real numbers y, such that y cannot equal... If we have a hole, that y-coordinate of the hole is going to be a, a gap in our graph vertically. And we said that the y-coordinate of the hole is negative 4 thirds. And then we have our horizontal asymptote at negative 1. The y-coordinate, the y-values never hit negative 1. And sometimes, sometimes the graph of a rational function can cross a horizontal asymptote, but we see this particular graph does not cross that horizontal line. So we say, uh, so we have our two values of y that we are not allowing to be a part of the range. All other real numbers are a part of the range. Increasing, we see from negative infinity all the way to negative 5. Sorry, no, that's not right. All the way to negative 3. Combine with from negative 3 all the way to we could say it's increasing all the way to positive 3 and then all the way from uh, positive 3 to infinity. So basically, the function is increasing over its entire domain. The domain we're leaving out, negative 3 and positive 3, it's increasing over the entire part of the domain. Decreasing nowhere. And that is it.